Welcome to Map Analysis for Hedgehogs. Today we explore three different techniques to deobfuscate JScript or JavaScript malware. And to do that, we look into a GoodLoader sample because GoodLoader is one of the most prevalent JScript malware samples out there. So let's look at GoodLoader for this case. GoodLoader is a JScript malware and it's a an initial infector. So it's mainly used to distribute other payloads. And um, it has by now up to six layers of encrypted code. So that's a pretty nasty JScript malware, to be honest. I'm going to use Notepad++ here. We set the language to JavaScript. And the first thing you will notice is that this is an open source library, in this case, jQuery. So here we have like 10,000 lines of code. And this is supposed to be good loader sample. So the code has to be hiding somewhere in this mess. Now, one of the ways you can go about this is you can search for the original jQuery library and then use meld on this and the original one. But the way I found it, I was like just scrolling through and found one of the functions that looked pretty weird. This function here, for instance, this stands out in um, context to the others because these are like random words with some digits behind them. So let's see where this function is actually called. We want to actually go to the beginning of that. This is called by this function. That's called by this function. Called by three. Called by word. North. These. Okay, we are kind of running in circles. So let's look at another one. Node 7. That's the start node. So node 7 is like with the entry point to the malware code. Now what I did here, and we are not going to do this in this video, that would be a little bit too much. But I was like, hmm, if I get a file, I want to analyze it. It would actually be nice to be able to extract all those nodes that are being called or all those functions that are being called uh, based on the start node. So I created a script for that. You can download that from GitHub. It's called extract called functions. And we are going to use that and provide it with this start node. So for that, you have to install node.js and you have to install npm, which is the packet manager. If you run it and you get this, you still have to install some packages with npm. So let's do that. Packages we use are Babel Core and Commander. And we're gonna install them and then the script should work. So as you can see, I've had some issues with the installation, uh, but I, I think it has to do with my VM, um, where uh, it for some reason didn't finish. So I started it again. So here you may notice that you have now here some modules and a package JSON that was created by this installation. So now you have all the requirements to call extract call functions JS. So let's 
check what we need. So we have a minus F for the file to deobfuscate and minus S for the start node. And that's what we are gonna use. So our file is this one. And the start node, as you may remember, is node seven. Now it will extract all of the functions that are called and also called from the called function. So it's like a re recursive way to find all of these. And not only that, if there are any identifiers in those functions, um, these will also be put into the extracted file. So this is the file we get. And now look at this. Instead of uh, we had here over 10,000 lines of code and we have now way less. We are at 138, which is better to handle than the 10,000 lines of code. So now we can actually analyze this. And the very first thing you will notice is, well, here are a ton of strings in this world three function. And they all seem to be built here and then built again and to be put into this final string finish.7. So you can check here, run, run is created here and instrument is this um, assignment here. So how do you go about this? So you could manually walk through that and try to, you know, copy, replace these variables, but I do not recommend that you will, it would take ages and you will be very frustrated if you do just one mistake. Um, it's gonna not gonna work and you will not find out why that happened. Um, so one way you could do is use regex. So let's copy and paste the code here. Actually, yeah, let's copy and paste all of that. Actually, I'm just interested in this part. So let's try to capture this part here and then see if we can replace this part here. With that, we need capturing groups to get that one. So, okay. So first, thing I think is we start out with a word, which is this. We have a space, we have equals, we have space. We have this. Some, uh, also by the way, I'm using, for now I'm using multi-line and global as options. So we want to capture that part, but we also want to capture this part because that's what we are going to replace this identifier with. Next, I need to access the identifier, right? So when this is 23, which is the first capture group, I want to replace it when it's used later on here. So we need to find this part again. And now I need to actually say single line. So I'm treating all of this as one line. And I'm trying to find the second 23. So this is how I'm doing it. It finds that part. Let's put this in another capture group for the replacement later in Notepad. This doesn't really work though. You see from the coloring that now we would replace 23 with 
all of this. So actually what I will do is I will exclude um, this identifier here. So instead of looking for all of the strings, we will be looking for this. So we see now that is match one, group two. So this is the replacement for 23, which we will use here. There's another thing we need to take care of. And that is we want to keep this part here. So this part is not going to be replaced. And that's why I put it in a capture group as well. And now we press CTRL F and we say replace. We put regular expression. We should make sure dot matches new line. So we see so we can get across the new line boundaries. So what is it that we want to do? Actually, we want to replace everything we find. Let's see, do we find something? Yeah, we find this 23, right? So we can get rid of this part here because we don't need it anymore, but we will need this. And here we put the match from here. So this is the third, so this is three. And then we want the second match, which is this. So replace it with two. We say replace. And we see now it has been replaced and the next match is here. Say replace again. And now we can basically press replace until all of these are gone and nothing's changed anymore. So why are these not going to be replaced? Because now we have here concatenations that are still there. And we can also address those with regex. But I also want to show you something else, another way you can use to deobfuscate samples um, where we will gonna proceed with this part here. So let's just copy and paste this. And we go to AST Explorer. So when you start astexplorer.net for the first time, there is probably this default snippet here. If it isn't, you can go to snippet new you can choose Java, you should choose JavaScript and Babel parser. So what is this actually? Babel is a transpiler. So in contrast to a compiler, it will transform JavaScript code to JavaScript code. And I believe it's used by developers to make their code more beautiful before they publish it. Um, I'm not entirely sure I'm not a developer though. Um, so the good thing about this is you can use transpiling also for deobfuscation and obfuscation for that matter. So we can use it for our program as well. And I, I want to at least get you familiar with the option and that this exists. An abstract syntax tree is something that compilers in general use. They have like this intermediate representation or internal representation of how the program is built up. So where are variables, where are functions? And that means if you use a tool like that, you have a lot of context information. Whereas regular expression is dumb in the sense that it cannot know what's a function, what's a variable, is this constant? Is this an identifier? Is this something else? It doesn't know the context, but um, abstract syntax trees, they do. The drawback of this using this as deobfuscation is it's probably, at least for if you just analyze a single sample with it, it's probably slower. So 
um, you have to write more code and you have to think a little bit more initially how you solve this uh, problem. But the transformations that you do, you can reuse them for similar code. So they are more applicable to other malware than regexes are. Your regexes are probably very specific to this particular sample. So it's more robust. If you click on the transform button, Babel V7, you get an example for transformation. And the standard example here is that the name is just reversed. So you see a function name that is reversed and you see a variable name that is also reversed. Let's see how this works here. So we have this abstract syntax tree. We have variable named tips. If we click here, it should highlight where the variable is. And you see it um, sees here a variable declarator, which is kind of this part. So if you click on that, you see it includes the let tips equals. We have the identifier, which is tips. And the variable is initialized with an array expression containing three string literals, which are these. So this is the buildup. And every node, so one, one part of these things where you can click on is a node. And every node has a type. So the type is saved in node.type. In this case, it's variable declarator. Here in this transformation code, we see that we have a visitor. What is that? Visitor traverses the whole abstract syntax tree. So the path is the information of where in the syntax tree we are currently at. And at every point in the path, you can convert the path to a single node, like this particular expression statement, for instance. That's a node. The visitor takes a match for a certain node type here. So it looks, in this case, it looks for a node that is an identifier. So every node that's an identifier will be visited by this and handled by this function here. So we see a identifier path node name. So it converts this to this identifier to the identifier node. Let's see, Where do we have an identifier? We have it here, it's called print tips. And we can see here, if we have identifier, there is dot name and that is print tips. So that's gonna be accessed here. And there's assigned a new name called uh, that's just the reversed version of that. So this is how you deal with abstract syntax trees in general. Let's now apply this to our sample. So we are going to put this function into this, and we are not so much interested in this reversal here. What we are interested in, so I'm choosing this as an easy example first, so because like it's the first thing we're gonna do. This would be easy to solve in regex as well, I know that. So, but let's start small. Um, and let's build a transformation that simply concatenates strings. So what do we have to do? First, we will look at our abstract syntax tree. And we see here, that these expressions, they are built up as binary expression nodes. So we have nodes of the type binary expression. On the left, we have a string literal, and on the right, we have a string literal. And if you go up, these nodes, you see they are made up of a binary expression on the left, and the string literal on the right. Because this binary expression is was the other concatenation, right? 
So, and this is like a tree of binary expressions until you are at the leaves with two string literals. So what we want to find is the binary expression that has a string literal on the left and a string literal on the right so that we can concatenate them. So we replace this with binary expression. And now we find specifically those binary expressions that have two string literals and we say we want to replace these. For that we use path replace with and Babel has a way to create nodes. Now we want to create a string literal node and for that we use the types um, constant here t string literal let's say we were to replace it with A. Now we see which nodes are going to be replaced. And now you can see that there, uh, not all of these are going to be replaced. So the concatenations are not resolved entirely. It's just some of them, which are at the very bottom of the tree, are going to be replaced. That's because the replacement should actually happen after we found all of the nodes here. So. We have a function for that, and that is exit. So we can change this to be only executed on exit. And at this point, I realize I have probably left out some nodes that we need. So we are going to add those as well. And the very reason that these were these were not replaced by the regex, that was the actual problem. And the very reason for that is that these contain some of our single quotes, which we explicitly excluded from the string here. So they were not replaced. And that's one of the reasons why regexes are, well, kind of hard to get it right. Um, so we just need to replace those nodes as well, which is this one. And this one. And now we got them all because those two are not necessary anymore. And now we just need to put the right value there, which is a concatenation of those nodes. So how do we get to the value here? You look at the string literal and it's left value. So you're at the binary expression, left value or right value. And now we got our concatenation transformation. So as you can see, it's a little bit more involved than regex, but it's also more robust. So now we're not having to deal with certain things like how JavaScript accepts or escapes strings, because that's like implicit from the parser. So let's copy this here. And there's one thing left to do. We want to actually get the whole string here. So finish seven is a huge string that's being built up here. Let's try to recreate it with our abstract syntax tree parser. So to do that, I'm going to use first um, a To do that, I'm going to type in a template that you can use that's a little bit more flexible. So because here 
if you formulate it this way, you can do several traversals through the program. So not only one traversal, but several. In this case, I want to do like a two pass um, or two times traversal where first I'm going to collect all of these nodes here. First traversal and second traversal is I'm going to replace all of these here. For that, we will define our visitor. So again, you're going to check here how it's built up. And this in particular is an assignment expression. So we have the assignment expression with the, on the left is the identifier similar six on the right is a string literal and that's what we want to have we want this assign, assignment expression node so we and we only want we don't want this assignment expression but we want those so we will say if the right side of it is a string literal so And what are we going to do? We're going to collect the nodes. And we call this to traverse the whole abstract syntax tree. And now this will fill up our array with all the assignment nodes that we want. And in a second pass, in a second traversal, we want to replace the literates. So let's define this visitor. And what do we want to replace? We want to replace these. So you look here, what is it? It's an identifier. So. If it's an identifier, let's replace it. Now this identifier, it shouldn't replace all of them because in that it would replace these here as well. We don't want that. Only want to replace these. So we are going to make sure these are part of a binary expression. So what exactly does it do? This is accessing the parent path. So we are currently at the identifier here and the parent is the binary expression here. So we just make sure that this identifier is part of a binary expression. Now I could also search for, you know, binary expression here and then check if there is an identifier node. Uh, both will work fine. It's just a different way of expressing the same. Now let's find our node, which of the nodes this is. And we um, provide a function to find, which will find our node. And what node do we want? These are... Um, and left name. Why? Because we have here, let's look again here. Uh, this is an assignment expression node and on the left is the identifier and we want to compare the name to the name of our current node. So we want to access this name and compare it to the name of our current identifier node. And we save this in the node variable. And if this variable is there, we will replace the node. And we can use the node as is. So the node on the right is the string literal, and that's what we are going to replace it with. So there's still some problem that I need to check first. Not yet. These um, braces are not necessary. 
So, and where are we at? It didn't work yet. No, it works. I just have these uh, still there. Now there's one place where you can delete them that's here. So one way you can do this is you can add path remove. And now all of the assignment expression with a string letter on the right side will be removed. All of them, no matter if you use them later for the replacement. So that can be a problem if you copy a bigger part where uh, you may delete some of those nodes forever. So, but anyways, we have our function here or our final string here which is what we wanted. And that is still in need of concatenation. Here you see these also need to be concatenated and you know how to solve this already. Uh, but there's another way you can deal with this and that's using some online JavaScript compiler and then just printing the string. So let's add our node here, which is not concatenated yet and we just print or console log the variable, press run and we get the whole string. So how are we gonna move forward with this? How is this variable used by the way? This is, let's analyze this a little bit. So we see here finish seven is put into a function named use 45. We also see here's another function where the result is being put into with this string here, which looks suspiciously like a, like a key. So use 45. Is here and it's doing something 2704 times. So there's pound and strong. Let's search these. That's just calling another function. And that's a substring something. And the pound one. Strong one. Calling another one, which is a mod of something. And now the interesting part of these calls is they have actually less arguments than they pretend to have here. So actually only three of them are used like that. Um, we can see here, this is our, if you wanna analyze this properly, I highly recommend renaming the variables. So that's the only way you can actually um, get along with understanding it. But just as a quick overview, um, this, this seems to decrypt something, right? So if you're gonna check how this is being used, it's put into JET. Question is where is this, if this is being decrypted, what? What is this? Where is this being used? Let's see where uh, Jet7 is being used. And you see here, it's an array and it's being called here. So this is a call on one of the functions of Jet7. So I expect to get an array from this part. So let's copy the whole code and let's actually just run this um, with our decryption function here. We need the key as well because I didn't copy the initialization of music. So let's run this. And it's complaining that this is not defined. Where do we have enemy? Ah, the reason is that we didn't initialize it 
we initialized finish seven, but not enemy. So gonna do this as well. Run. Young one is not defined. This is another one of these. That's one. And here's another one. We're just gonna take these. Wait here. We are not calling this try again. Decoded is jet seven, not finish. Right. That's may that's way better. So we have an array first um content is constructor and for the second the content is this which is another script now if we put this script into ast explorer we can make a prettier version of that but we should probably remove the transformation before we do that so this is our script The script that we unpacked from that. It's adding some or doing something with registry keys here. And here's another encrypted script. If we check what year one is, so let's check or well, find it in the context here. This is US45. So we can simply put this again. And also you see here's a call, right? You can put this again into our online decryptor. I think it was this. Let's run and here we are. But this isn't really entirely decoded. All right, so I needed some time to find the problem here and why this part of the code is not working as expected. You see, it's kind of still in the wrong order and some of these are still reversed. The reason for that is the escapes here, the double escapes, they are supposed to be just one escape. So I guess during the um, conversion process, the escape nodes are um, not double escaped anymore, but single escape. So all we got to do is we set the search mode here to normal. We say we want to find the double slashes and we replace it with one slash, say replace all. Copy and paste the new code in here and we run this and it works fine. Wait, let's beautify this. Move the traversals here unknown return outside of function. So the way GoodLoader is dealing with this is it actually wraps a function around this. So we're gonna do the same. And we grab the script here and also we can traverse with the concat visitor. So we get a little bit nicer output. And in case you're wondering, yes, I was experiment a little bit with this. That's the same concat visitor we used before, just put in a separate uh, constant here. So the code might look a little bit different. But yeah, here we have our final layer. 
and we can see here the C2 URLs and the values they apply here to these. Um, so this didn't get concatenated. Why? Because our concatenation is based on two string literals in a binary expression. And this is not a string literal here. So it's uh, another um, an array. So this is not going to be replaced because this part here is actually that part. So it's a um, not two string literals like this, but these are seen together. These are seen together as another binary expression with a string literal. So these are not going to be replaced by our function. So we have now used and demonstrated three different techniques to deobfuscate Gutloader and to unpack it. By far the easiest are regex and dynamic execution. However, if you are looking to build robust tools like deobfuscation and unpacking tools for JScript, JavaScript, Malware, I think abstract syntax tree manipulation is the most robust way and the best way to go. Also, if you want to well, at some point develop a, an arsenal of little scripts that help you deobfuscate samples in general. I think also abstract syntax tree manipulation is probably better and more robust than uh, trying to do the same with regex. So it depends on your goals, um, but for fast and easy manual analysis, you probably are best off with dynamic execution and regex. And just as a side note, I created a good loader unpacking tool. You will find it in the, the link in the description below the video. So this also uses abstract syntax tree manipulation with Arbe. And you can see um, how I utilize this to unpack six layers, up to six layers of good loader, depending on the sample that we are using. I considered using the six layer sample for this um, video, but then it would have taken way too long. You see, it's already more than 40 minutes right now for three layers. Um, yeah, but the other layers are not that much more interesting. They are just repeating what the previous layers did. Um, so I chose the sample instead. Uh, yeah, if you want to look into some examples, um, check out the good loader unpacking script on GitHub. If you want to learn Mav analysis from the ground up, then check the link in the description below. There's a link to my Udemy course for beginners. It contains 11 hours of video content and uh, the link is a coupon link that's a little bit cheaper for you than um, buying it from Udemy itself. So check it out and maybe I see you there.